Would you believe me if I told you that I was once the world's best skydiving instructor? You know, if you wanted to jump out of a plane but hadn't before, I'd be the person that you'd jump out in tandem with and I'd be in charge of pulling the cord and making sure that our parachute opens in time and that we all land safely without breaking any bones. And what if I told you these great stories of me jumping from incredible heights and free falling for a while? Would you put your life in my hands and jump out of the plane with me without actually ever having witnessed me in action before yourself? Of course you wouldn't. You would need more than just pretty words to convince yourself before you risked it all and trusted me with your life. You would want to make sure that I'm not just talking the talk, but I actually know how to walk the walk as well. warns us time and time again the dangers of hypocrisy and of simply being a smooth talker or a charmer. There's a moment in the Gospel of Matthew where the chief priests and elders are gathered around Jesus and they're trying to trap him in his own words and trip him up by asking him questions about the origin of his authority. But Jesus turns the tables and he actually ends up accusing themselves of infidelity to God. He tells them this story of a father who has two sons and he asks his sons if they will go and work in his fields. And when he asks the first son, the first son says, nope, I'm not doing that, not gonna go. But then later on, he has a change of heart and he does eventually go and work in the field despite grumbling about it first. And when the father asks the second son, the second son says, sure dad, I'm gonna go work in the fields. But in the end, doesn't actually bother his ginger at all. <laughs> Jesus then asks the priests and the elders, which of the sons they think did the father's will. You see, Jesus is so much more than just a quick thinker or a good debater. He is our Lord and he is the word of God incarnate. And so he uses this parable to explain to the Pharisees how their minds are closed off to God, despite professing to be great men of faith. Whereas the outcasts of society, the people that were typically considered the rejects, you know, tax collectors, prostitutes, um, the sinners, these people were the ones who were humble and open to the will of God and doing the Father's will in their life. And so he warns us that no matter how holy we think that we might appear outwardly to others, if we're just going through the motions and ticking off the boxes for show, then we will never truly encounter Christ unless we are open and we trust that he is who he says he is. But unfortunately, society doesn't always see it this way. You know, if what the church teaches doesn't match up with what we think is right or what we believe, um, we tend to question the church rather than ourselves. And it shouldn't be like that. We should be more like the tax collectors and the outcasts of society in Jesus' time who humbly recognised their own weaknesses and then tried to align their hearts with God's. And this sometimes means that we will be asked to put ourselves last and to do something that we wouldn't normally choose for ourselves or even necessarily want to do, but it's for the greater good of our relationship with God. In the story Jesus told the son who said no to the father's request but then later changed his mind and went out to work in the fields despite not initially feeling it, pleased his father more than the son who just knew what his father wanted to hear and said yes but then didn't bother at all. So the point is even if our initial knee-jerk reaction is to grumble at the thought of doing God's will, we can still make God glad if we choose to obey because we're not motivated by our own feelings or our own desires. We're motivated solely by our love for God and our desire to please him. So moral of the story, you wouldn't trust someone with your life and jump out of a plane with them just because they knew all the right things to say. And the kingdom of heaven is not promised to those who talk the talk and know how to look like they've got it all together, but to those who are open to walking with God daily. Jesus asks us today, do our actions match up with our words? Because the Christian walk asks more of us than just ticking off the boxes and going to mass and following all the rules just because. It's easy to say all of the right things, but we are called to more. We are called to take Christ into our homes, into our schools, our friendship groups, our workplace, not just leave him at mass, but to let him encompass every aspect of our life and to walk with him daily so that when others see the way that we love and, and live out our faith, that then they ask, well, what is this all about? Maybe I want in on that. So let's take time this week to look at our relationship with God and ask ourselves, do our hearts align with God's hearts? And is there any areas where we maybe stray from doing God's will? And if so, don't be discouraged. Instead, ask God to give you the grace to be more open and receptive to him and to make our hearts like his. God bless you guys.